Yes, guys, turn to question number three in value added statements. On the basis of the following income statement to Bright Limited, you are required to prepare a gross value added statement and a statement of reconciliation between gross value added and profit before tax. Sales less returns, dividend income, and miscellaneous income can be called as other incomes. Your decrease in inventory of finished goods and consumption of raw materials, power and lighting. The first three items should be taken as cost of bought out goods and services. Wages, have, wages, salaries and bonus and staff welfare expenses. These two can be considered as value applied towards employees. Excise duty, either you can show it as a reduction from sales or you can show it as value applied towards garment. Anything is fine. Other manufacturing expenses also have to be taken under cost of bought out goods and services. Administration expenses, director's remuneration under value applied to employees. Other administrative expenses under cost of bought out goods and services. Interest, 9% debentures and long term loans, both of them will be considering under value applied towards providers of finance. But on bank overdraft, I will consider it as a part of cost of bought out goods and services. Depreciation on fixed assets, value applied towards expansion and replacement of assets. Provision for tax, value applied towards garment. So there is some appropriation, general reserve. This is value applied towards expansion and replacement of assets. Proposed dividend is value applied towards shareholders and also the tax on distributed profits. That also should be value applied towards, uh, towards the shareholders. So let's start. Try to frame it under the proper statement of gross value added. Value added statement of Bright Limited for the year ending 31st March 2012 all rupees in thousands. First statement is gross value added or in short we call it as GVA. Start with sales. One five two seven nine five six. I will deduct the excise duty from this. Fourteen thousand five forty is the excise duty. Resultant figure is fifteen lakh thirteen thousand four one six. Next. Cost of bought out goods and services. <coughs> yes, guys, go one by one, line by line, first item. Decrease in finished goods. Six zero five four consumption of raw material seven lakh forty thousand eight twenty one power and lighting One two zero zero three zero. Wages, salaries, and bonuses value applied towards employees. Staff welfare expenses is value applied towards employees. 
excise duty already deducted. I have other manufacturing expenses as well. Other manufacturing expenses. 32,565. This production and operation expenses continue. Other administrative expenses. Other admin expenses. 32,640. Interest on bank OD, 100, that's it, take a reduction, this is value added from manufacturing and trading activities. Add other income. I have two other incomes. First one is dividend interest. One thirty. Miscellaneous income four seventy four this total is gross value. Added yes guys cost of bought out goods and services total it Five lakhs sixty one thousand two not six plus six not four gross value added five six one eight one zero. This is gross value added. Check your calculation. Gross value added is five six one eight one zero. Value applied. First one is towards employees. Two parts. First one, wages, salaries and bonus. Three lakh eighty one thousand seven sixty. Staff welfare expenses twenty six thousand two forty is four lakhs eight thousand. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot director's remuneration. Yeah.
director's remuneration 7810 4 lakh 15810 towards garment only one i guess provision for tax Twenty-five thousand four seventy provision for tax towards providers of finance or towards finances interest on nine percent loan mortgage loan to be specific mortgage debenture I'm sorry. Nine percent mortgage debentures, fourteen thousand four hundred. Interest on long-term loan from financial corporations that is ten thousand. Next one towards shareholders. First one among shareholders is proposed dividend. $22,000. Dividend distribution tax. Tax on dividend distributed. Two eight one eight. This twenty four eight one eight. Last one is towards expansion and replacement of assets. General reserve appropriation eighteen thousand two one two retained earnings two Balance transfer to balance sheet is eight thousand eight hundred. Opening figure balance of last year's profit is six thousand three hundred. Six thousand three hundred became eight thousand eight hundred. That means the my retained earnings during the current year is only two thousand five hundred. Depreciation, don't forget that. Depreciation is fifty thousand six hundred. This seventy one thousand three one two. And finally, my total value applied is a combination of each, which should be five six one eight one zero again. It should total to five six one eight one zero, which is the total of your gross value added. So guys, your gross value added was five six one eight one zero, which should be equal to your total value applied five six one eight one zero. 
Guys, if you want your excise duty, this part, I have reduced it from sales. This can also be taken into value applied towards garment as well. This can also be possible. If you want to just push it to the other side, that can happen. Your excise duty can be also written as value applied towards garment. There could be even a contradiction with this dividend distribution tax, which can also be written as value applied towards government. Because dividend is what the shareholders get, the tax is what the government gets. So I can push even DDT to your value applied towards government. These are two values where I can have alternative treatments. Let's go to the fourth one. Oh yeah, there's a reconciliation statement for the previous one to be done. Come on guys, let's pick up the reconciliation date statement. What do we do with the reconciliation statement? Always check from PBT and whatever items have been deducted from the PNL to get the PBT and those items which haven't been considered in GBA, keep adding them back. So I'll start with the reconciliation statement. Let's start with PBT, profit before tax. Profit before tax is given to us as 71,000. Add back all the figures which you haven't taken. I'll go from bottom to top. First item above profit before tax is depreciation, which we have considered as value applied towards replacement of assets and expansion. Depreciation is 50,600, which will add up. Next, go about interest. Interest on 9% mortgage debentures. And also long term loans. 9% mortgage debentures is 14,400. Long term loan is 10,000. Director's remuneration. We have considered that among value applied to employees. Seven eight one zero. Excise duty we have considered here only staff welfare expenses. Twenty six thousand two forty <coughs> salary, wages, and bonus three lakhs eighty one thousand seven sixty. We have taken under value applied towards employees. If you would have taken excise duty under value applied towards government, I would have added even excise duty. But now, since I have deducted it from sales, I don't have to include it again. 
This total should be back to again 561,810. Consolation statements are always simple guys. Turn to question number 4. On the basis of the following P and L and Z limited of Z limited and a supplementary information provided thereafter, prepare a gross value added statement for the company for the year ended 31st March 2012. Prepare also a reconciliation statement between GBA and profit before tax. P&L of Z Limited is given to you. Sales, other income, production and operation expenses, administrative expenses, interest, depreciation, profit before tax, provision for tax and profit after tax. Credit carry forward from the previous balance sheets as 40. Transfer to general reserve. Interim preference dividend paid and proposed preference dividend final. Proposed equity dividend balance carried forward to balance sheet in the supplementary information is breaking up each expenditure your production and operation expenses include raw material and store consumed which will be included under GVA statement as cost of bought out goods and services raw materials and stores consumed I'll take it there wages salaries and bonus I'll take it as value applied towards employees local taxes including says value applied towards government other manufacturing expenses I'll consider it under Cost of bought out goods and services itself. Administrative expenses consists of salaries and wage, uh, salaries and commission to directors which is value applied towards employees. Audit fee, provision for bad debt and other administrative expenses. All these items to be considered under cost of bought out goods and services. Interest on loan from bank for working capital. This is under cost of bought out goods and services. Debentures, I will consider it under value applied towards providers of finance. That's it. So Z limited what he asked. First I'll start with sales all rupees in lakhs. Five zero one zero. There's no excise duty to be deducted. Cost of bought out goods and services.
the other two values, we'll take it up. And value applied statement. Administrative expenses, I'll simply deduct the remuneration to directors. Salary and remuneration to the directors is 60 out of 185, so the balance 125 can be considered. Excluding salaries to director. Interest on debentures. Working capital I'll take under, sorry, interest on working capital loan. Debentures I'll take under value applied. Working capital loan interest is 35. That's it. This is value added. from manufacturing and trading activities. Finally add other income. One thirty. And we arrive at gross value added. I think GVA is Then come to the value applied statement. Value applied towards employees. Two items. First one is wages. Salaries. And bonus. All rupees in lakhs. Wages, salaries and bonuses, 6.10. And then salaries and commission to directors, 60, total is 6.70. Value applied towards garment, cess and local taxes, included in production and operation expenses, 220. Other than that, I have provision for tax.
other than that I have a provision for tax of 280 total value applied is 500 to government towards providers of finance only one interest interest on debentures 200 value applied towards shareholders are multiple things first one is preference dividend and then equity dividend preference dividend interim dividend paid is 50 final dividend proposed is 50 total preference dividend is 100 equity dividend is 300 total value applied to shareholders is 400 value applied towards expansion I will have a depreciation first. Depreciation is 370. Other than that, I have appropriations to general reserve 100. General reserve appropriation is 100. And retained earnings towards the end. What is the PL balance transferred to balance sheet? Balance carried to balance sheet is 60. Above that, top credit balance in the last year's balance sheet is 40. 40 became 60. Retained earnings are 20. This total is 490. And my total value applied. Four ninety plus four hundred eight ninety thousand ninety thousand five ninety thousand five ninety plus six ten six seventy is back to two two six zero. Back to the same figure two two six zero.
Yes, guys, the reconciliation statement, don't forget this. Start with your PPT. Your PPT given in the question is uh, 800. Yeah, now, obviously, everything is in lakhs. Move upward, depreciation of 370 not considered, added there. Move upward, interest, one interest was not considered in GBA, that is interest on debentures, because it was taken under value applied, 200. Next, go for the administrative expenses, we did not consider salary and commission to directors. Salaries and commission to directors is 60. We also did not consider under production and operation expenses, wages, salaries and bonus, which form part of value applied towards employees, 16. We also haven't considered cess and local taxes, which was also included under production and operation expenses, cess and local taxes. Which was 220. Check 800 plus 370, 1170, 1170 plus 200, 1370, 1370 plus 60, 1430, 1430 plus 610, 2230, 1430 plus 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, 220, Value added limited for issues you with the following PNL. Night need rate after PNL is given to us. Turnover is based on invoice value and the net of sales tax. Salaries, wages, and other employee benefits amounting to 14761 are included in operating expenses. So, your operating expenses, which is given as 26,741, includes 14,761 rupees of salaries, wages, and other employee, other employee benefits. Cash credit represents temporary source of funds. It has not been taken considered as a part of capital, obviously. So whatever interest on cash credits is there, we have to consider it as cost of bought out goods and services. Transfer of 54,000 to the credit or deferred tax account is included in provision for tax. Very good. So your provision for tax includes a small portion of deferred tax as well. Prepare value added statement for the year ended 31st March 2012 and reconcile the total with the profit before tax. Come on guys.
Yes, guys. So value added statement of which company is this? The company name is Value Added Limited. Value Added Limited as on 31st March 2012. Start with your sales. All rupees are given in thousands. Turnover is twenty-nine thousand eight seventy-two. Cost of bought goods and services. First one is operating expenses. Adjustment given in point number two, salaries, wages, and other benefits. This is a value applied. Twenty-six thousand seven forty-one includes this item of fourteen thousand seven sixty-one. Uh, this will be bringing me to the figure of eleven thousand nine eighty. Interest on eight percent debentures cannot be considered. Yes, interest on cash credits can be considered. It's a temporary source of funds given in point number three. One fifty one. I haven't considered excise duty here. I'll take it under your value applied. No problem. That is all the information that we see. This is value added from manufacturing and trading activities. Add other incomes. One zero four two. This will give me gross value added. Twenty nine thousand eight hundred and eighty three. Value applied. Value applied towards employees is salaries, wages, and other employee benefits. Fourteen seven sixty one. All rupees in thousands. Towards government, I can write excise duty. I can either show it as a deduction from sales also. Excise duty is 1952. Provision for tax. Provision for tax 376. It includes 54 transfer to defer tax. Defer tax. I'll take it as expansion and replacement of assets. So remove fifty four from provision for tax. That will be three twenty two. Total is two two seven four. Towards providers of finance, interest on eight percent debentures. Nine eighty seven. Towards shareholders, dividend one twenty-five. Towards expansion, there is no depreciation. Yeah, there is a depreciation. Twenty-five thousand 
depreciation is 342 there is some transfer to fixed asset replacement reserve and finally retain earnings he directly gave you retained profits 175 582 get the total value applied Total it should come to 18,783 again. Sorry guys, I forgot defer tax. Defer tax appropriation is 54. should be Yes guys, reconciliation, PVT, PVT is somewhere there, on there, 741, depreciation is 342, what else, excise duty also, because excise duty I have taken it under value applied, excise duty is 1952, what else, interest on cash credits was considered, Interest on 8% debentures was not considered. Nine eighty seven. One more item salaries. Wages and other employee benefits fourteen seven sixty
Go for the next one, sixth question. Following is the PNL of New Mode Reporting Limited. Prepare a gross value added statement or as on 31st March, showing also the reconciliation between GBA as well as profit before tax. There is some balance sheet which has been provided to you. Come down below. Production and operation expenses consists of consumption of raw materials, consumption of stores, local tax, then I'll take it as value applied towards government, salary to administration staff, value applied towards employees. So these two items should be excluded from production and operation expenses. Administrative expenses include salaries and commission to directors, 10,000 rupees. That should be considered as value applied towards employees again. Interest, interest on bank OD, cost of bought out goods and services. Fixed loans, 1,2,000. Working capital loan, also to be considered under cost of bought out goods and services. Fixed loan, I will consider it under value applied towards providers of finance. Excise duty, question mark. Now, excise duty, you might think that very easily I can calculate of what is the total interest. Total interest given to is 1248. Now, if I total this minus 1248, I will get out the excise duty. Not at all right because there is a statement which is given down below. Excise duty amounts to one tenth of the value added by manufacturing and trading activities. So we have to calculate using this one tenth and any balancing figure between 1248 and the total of these items will be taken as some other finance charges to be put under providers of finance. Okay. So value applied towards providers of finance will carry that balancing figure. As of now let's start calculating. Guys, when you have to calculate excise duty, I can get two values of excise duty. One when I take it as a deduction from sales and one where, one where I am doing as per towards government, uh, you know, value applied towards government when I include it here. I will calculate as per both the methods. Yes guys, start with your value added statements of new mode reporting. New mode reporting limited for the year ended 31st December 2011. Sales 12,480 all rupees in thousands. Less excise duty. I don't know this value because he said it is one tenth of the value applied, value added by manufacturing and trading activities. I don't know, I don't have this value at all with me. We'll place it later on. Cost of bought out goods and services. Pick up the values. First one. Production and operation expenses. Under this I have consumption of raw material. Six four two zero. Everything is in thousands. Consumption of stores. 
80,000. Local tax don't consider, salary to administration staff don't consider, other manufacturing expenses will be considered. Eight eighty four thousand. This is seven three eight four. Administrative expenses. Read the point number two in additional information given below. Excluding salary and commission to directors. What is the total administration expenses? 360 of which 10 is to directors. So 350 is other administrative expenses. Interest on. Bank order of being 218. Working capital loan. From IFCI is 40. Value added from manufacturing and trading activities will be the resultant figure. Add your other incomes. One ten. And this will be cross value added. But I still can't get the figure because excise duty above is an unknown item there. But what I can say is, if I don't consider this excise duty and if I start calculating, the figure which I get here, value added from manufacturing and trading activity, it, without excluding the, sorry, without deducting the excise duty, excise duty being one tenth of the value, then the value which I will get here ultimately will be 110 percent. It includes the value of excise duty now. So find out what is the value including excise duty. Computation of excise duty if ED is assumed as X then value added from Manufacturing and trading activities, how much will it be? Calculate 12480 minus x that is deduct 7384, 350 and 258 and give me the balance. Value added from manufacturing and trading activity. This will be 4488 minus X. 4488 four, minus X. Don't take this 110 guys. This 110 is after value added from manufacturing and trading activities without considering 110. I am talking about the above value, value added from manufacturing and trading activity is 4488 minus x. I can say x is equal to 10% of 4488 minus x. x duty is 10% he said. Then calculate 
x is equal to 448.8 divided by 1.1x. Is that 408? That will give me 408. Guys, let's say we did not consider excise duty as a deduction from sales. Let's say I have directly put it as value applied towards garment. Then no x, nothing. My resultant total figure will be 4488 which is your value added from manufacturing and trading activity. Your excise duty is 10% of 4488. That is 448.8. Answers will be different, definitely. But either of the answer can be considered, guys. Yeah, so if I place this 408 figure here, and this is 12,072, and this will give me 4080. Add 110, 4190 is my gross value added. Salaries to admin staff. All rupees in thousands again. 1240. Salaries and commission to directors. Ten one two five zero is the total. Value applied towards garment only provision for tax. Oh, one second, provision for tax as well as local taxes. Local tax is also there under production and operation expenses. Local tax is 16,000. Provision for tax is 110. Total value applied towards garment is 126. Towards providers of finance. Interest on fixed loan from SIDB 102. Other interest. What is the total interest? Total interest is 1248 minus 218 bank overdraft interest minus 102 fixed loan interest minus 40 working capital interest minus excise duty 408. That would be some other interest which is not specified to me. I think this is 530. Check other interest. Plus 218. 550 plus 218. 480. 480 guys. 582 is the total. Towards shareholders, I have dividends. 320 dividend. Towards the replacement of assets and expansion. Depreciation is 32. Going in the reverse order. Next one. Interest. What is not considered in gross value added? 
इंटरेस्ट ऑन फिक्स लोन ऑफ सिड बी वन और टू सम अदर इंटरेस्ट विच वी कैलकुलेटेड एज बैलेंसिंग फिगर फोर एटी नेक्स्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपेंसिस आई डिड नॉट कंसिडर सैलरीज एंड कमीशन टू डायरेक्टर्स सॉरी सॉरी गाइज डिप्रीसिएशन इज वन नॉट टू हैव टू कंसिडर ट्रांसफर टू फिक्स डेसेट रिप्लेसमेंट रिजर्व फिक्स डेसेट रिप्लेसमेंट रिजर्व एट हंड्रेड Retained earnings. Retained earnings. What is the surplus transfer to balance sheet? Twelve hundred. Last year's opening balance was one twenty. So this is thousand eighty. Nine one two. Total value added is four one nine zero. Should be totaling to the same value, guys. My reconciliation statement PBT is two three one zero. Adding depreciation of thirty two. Interest on fixed loan, other interest charges. Fixed loan one or two, other interest charges four eighty. Salary to director ten. Salary to administration staff. Twelve forty. Local taxes sixteen should be back to the same total four one nine zero. Your answer will be different if you take excise duty as value applied towards garment. Anything is fine. Both the answers can be taken.